Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Uh, on my way to get a quick workout in. Uh, for those who aren't aware, I currently live in my hometown of Houston, Texas. I've had the pleasure and the blessing of living in a number of different places, different climates, different environments, and so uh, nothing catches me off guard, surprises me. I've been in very, very cold climates, very, very warm. Uh, and um, uh, comfortable climates and very, very hot climates. Houston is one of those hot places normally. That's, we're, we're used to heat here. Uh, and we just had a winter storm. So um, temperatures and snow that would not in the slightest bother people from the Midwest and the Northeast or even the central north for that matter. But uh, for a state that's not used to it, it caused a lot of problems. Uh, we are currently, presently, my family uh, in my household dealing with uh, a lack of water because we had a pipe burst uh, in the most weirdest place, but it burst. And so uh, to, to minimize water damage, which we experienced some, um, uh, we are having to wait to have that prepared to, before we can have our water, water uh, flowing freely again. But a lot of other people fared a lot worse. Entire ceilings caving in, walls caving in, and a lot more from the damage of water from pipes that burst. That's not why I'm here. Uh, you can take something from it if you happen to be one of the people in an affected area. Uh, and you're going through it right now, and there is something to take from this. But I was having a conversation with my wife, Mary, uh, who's also a business owner, and, does, and uh, you know, she does her own thing. And she's at her office, I was at my office, and we were talking. And she even did a video on it about making social media a more positive and safer space for people because uh, there are a lot of things, you know, pe there's a lot of hatred spew, there's a lot of judgment spew uh, on social media, there's a lot of vitriol and antagonism flowing on social media. And that's a part of the safe space too. But I'm gonna tell you another place where I believe we need a lot more positivity by, by way of truth in, as it pertains to process. I am one who has unapologetically committed myself to teaching the principle of process, that there is no obtainment of the promise without there first being an endurance of a process. Process always precedes promise. But we live in a social media era in which people can boast of their successes and give an appearance as though there wasn't a struggle, as though there wasn't a process, as though there wasn't many failures before the success. And I know for a fact that not, not to be the case. I have been privy to some very successful people outside of myself. But even when it comes to myself, I have by most standards, been extremely successful on a material level, on a social level, on an academic level, I've, I've, I've achieved. But what I can tell you is it came through hard work, it came through consistency, it came through the willingness to fail in order to succeed, the willingness to hit rock bottom if I had to in order to regain my footing and press again and leap again and jump again. I have had the blessing of living in houses as up to close to 8,000 square feet. And I've also had a stretch of my, a very short stretch, but still a stretch, where after all of that, I ended up homeless. Those of you who know me know that was a point in time after all of that success, poor decision making and, and a bit of arrogance led to me being homeless and having as little as $2.47 in 
in my pocket. And the only thing I had of value that I could relaunch myself with was the diamond earring studs that I had in my ear, which I sold, purchased a laptop, and reinvented myself. And here I am again, still climbing, but nowhere near the bottom. But let me tell you, it was a process. We have so many people out there, a lot of whom I know, who will present to you all of the glory of their success while failing to share the story of the commitment and the climb. And I think that does such an injustice and a disservice to the people who are literally vicariously using you as a mentor or inspiration to become something that they've never been before. See, when you decide that you're going to become something that you've never been, You've got to be willing to do some things that you've never done. And anytime you decide to do some things you've never done, there's this awkward time, this awkward space in which you're learning that which you don't know. It's uncomfortable. It's not efficient. It's not effective immediately, but you, you remain consistent. You make up in your mind that you're not going to give up. People ask me, what part of my gift? And I do believe that your gift makes space for you. Your, it is your gift, your natural inherent capacity to do something exceptionally, extraordinarily well that will open doors for you. But it is the commitment to refining the gift. It is the commitment to pressing through the difficulties that will determine your success. The gift doesn't guarantee success. The gift guarantees opportunity. How hard you press how committed you become. People ask me all the time, what, it is, what, what, what gift is, is it my intellect? No, I, I think I'm intellectually gifted. I do. I, I, just some of the things I've been able to accomplish long before anybody even knew who I was. As early in life as three years old, I would say, okay, I'm intellectually gifted, but that has absolutely nothing to do with my success. It makes it easier when I go after something to learn it, but that's not what guaranteed my success. Uh, have I been physically gifted? Yeah, uh, some of my successes came along the lines of my physical uh, talents, but that's not what guaranteed my successes. Well, Rick, what is it that guarantees your success? And it is my commitment to finish what I started. Once I make up in my mind to get something, to do something, to achieve something, to obtain something, I'm either going to accomplish it or I'm going to die trying. Quitting is not an option. Turning back is not an option. Matter of fact, if you go to any place that I've spoken at before, uh, and I love to see this, when I go back to places I've spoken before and I'm, I'm introduced and I walk on the stage, people who've heard me speak before immediately start to shout, no surrender, no retreat. Because it's such a heavy part of my message. No surrender, no retreat. Not only am I not going to give up, I'm not turning back. I'm not running from the challenges. I'm not, I'm not falling victim to uncertainty. I'm not giving in. I'm not letting go. I'm not turning back. That's how you make it. But we have a tendency, those of us who have experienced some level of success, of pretending that we've never struggled, of pretending that we didn't have hardships, of pretending that it wasn't our, we act like we just walked out there and for the last 30 years, it's been nothing but glory. We do people who are looking to us for inspiration a disservice when we're not transparent. I don't mean, you ain't gotta tell them what you did and what you, but you, you need to let them know that was a moment that it was ugly. That was a moment for me. Let me tell you something. I hope it inspires you. If you're looking for that perfect person that always had it together, never had any hard times, never made any dumb decisions, and it's just been glory since they stepped out of high school, I'm not that person. You need to find someone else. But let me tell you something. When I went through what I went through, and I hit rock bottom, I, and that's one of the reasons I love Les Brown so much. 
because of I can relate to him. I can relate to him. I can relate to E.T., Eric Thomas. I can relate to him because I know what it feels like to, to, to have to climb and nothing be given to you. But one thing that Les Brown says all the time is that if you fall down, hope that you land on your back because if you land on your back, you can look up. And if you can look up, you can get up. And I remember landing flat on my back and it was so bad at one time that I told God, don't let me lose it. I was afraid I was going to lose my mind. The strain was that hard. But this is the promise I made God. I didn't ask him to take me out of it. I didn't ask him for some miraculous delivery. I knew it was a process that I had entered and I needed to complete the process in order to have the promise. But here's, here's the deal I made with God. It was real simple. So if you wake me up, I'll answer the bell. Don't let me die until I finish my recovery. Let my story be a testimony of, uh, 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 of what consistent faith looks like. That was it. Wake me up and I'll answer the bell each and every day. And that's what I've done. And here I am, 24 books published, two doctorate degrees, seven active businesses, all have reached profit. Was it easy? Hell no, it wasn't easy. It was extremely challenging. I just refused to give up. I'm not quitting. And now I'm going to challenge you to do the same. I know that there was a lot of glare driving, but I needed to do this before I got to the gym. And unfortunately, I did it at a time when there was a lot of glare up until this point. But I do apologize for that. But as long as you can hear what I say, how I'm looking and who you're looking at really doesn't matter. It was me. So check this out. For the next, what, week, I'm extending my rapid change my rapid change breakthrough program uh, at the crazily discounted price. I don't discount my prices because my value brings everything that I demand in price. It, 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 it's delivered in value. But I want to reach people that would normally not be able to walk or work with me. And for that, I have lowered this and made it very affordable for the three sessions you're going to get. It's going to cost less than one session. Uh, click that link. Let's make something happen extraordinary. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. And I'm going to do the same. Talk to you soon.